Today I marathoned my top four films from Letterboxd and I'm thinking about making a change after watching all four of them. I recently made a big change when I removed Shin Godzilla and replaced it with Godzilla Minus One. I used to tell people, I used to say that Shin Godzilla was my favorite movie of all time and it's still one of my favorite movies of all time. But Godzilla Minus One has surpassed it. I love them both equally, pretty much. But I didn't want two, two Godzilla movies in my top four, so I just swapped them out. And that was a, a big decision. <laughs> I had to see Godzilla Minus One about 12 or 13 times before I said, yeah, I gotta, I gotta swap them out. Um, so I saw it today for the 15th time, but I also saw my other three that are currently in my top four. And I'm seriously considering making another adjustment after watching all four and we'll get to it. So I started my day off with Pearl. Pearl is a horror movie that came out a couple years ago and my wife and I saw it in the theater. We had not seen X, which is the other movie that's it's going to become a trilogy, this series, that is set over a vast time period. The X is set in the 70s. This is set in 1918. And there's an upcoming movie called Maxine, which is apparently set in the 80s. I don't know too much about that. I don't follow hype cycles until something comes out. So I'm not following it. So we saw this kind of on a whim and I fell in love with it the first time we saw it in a the theater. Really connected with the character. I think it's a cool, tragic story about an abused person who deals with her trauma in very relatable ways until it goes way too far. And I really enjoyed that and Mia Goth is incredible in this movie so watch it this morning uh, it still holds up it's, it, that's going to stay on the list I love that movie next Kiki's Delivery Service for a wild <laughs> change in tone I watched Kiki's Delivery Service and this movie is perfect it has universal appeal. I would re recommend this movie highly to any living person. It's, it's so perfect and amazing. Oddly enough, I've seen this movie, I feel like, a million times. I have never watched the Japanese dub until today. So the English dub is great. It has Phil Hartman as the voice of Gigi. Uh, Kirsten Dunn says Kiki. It's great. It's super well done. I love the uh, American dub, English dub. But today was the first time I watched the Japanese dub. And despite not having Phil Hartman, it is super well done as well. It's amazingly effective. The story gets across just as well. Um, no Phil Hartman is Gigi, but it's still a perfect movie excellent from start to finish it's my favorite ghibli miyazaki movie by far i like i like most of them but this one i just love with all my heart kiki is amazing then i went to the theater and saw godzilla minus one for the 15th time and it's a perfect film again with universal appeal I wouldn't recommend it to literally everyone living like I would with Kiki's Delivery Service, but Godzilla Minus One is so universally appealing that I've every time I see it in the theater, there are people from all walks of life, all age groups, demographics, and all of them, every time when we're walking out of the theater, I can hear the chatter after people collect themselves and stop crying from the from the ending of the movie they were like wow that was off i can't believe how good that was that was amazing it was so much better than i expected every single time so if you haven't seen it check out the movie it's it's only going to be in theaters for a couple more weeks 
and I highly recommend it. So again, a new addition to my top four. And now here's the one that I think is going to lose its spot in the top four, and that is House from 1977. Now I think when I set up my Letterboxd account, I probably threw this in the top four as kind of the hipster, weird pick. I do love this movie. This movie is very weird. It's colorful. It's stupid. It's annoying. And it's amazing. I gave it five stars. I've watched it many, many times. It's, it's very rewatchable because it's so short and it plays very fast. Like it's very fast paced. It's an 88 minute long movie and it feels like it's about half a, a half an hour long. That's one of the reasons I love it so much. But the reason I think it's going to drop out of the top four is that it doesn't have like a deep, tangible thing or a message, a, a tale to tell, or characters. You'll notice that all of these previous movies, like Pearl really connected to this tragic character who suffers this abuse, wants to get out of it, goes too far. Totally love that. Kiki, I connect with Kiki trying to just become an adult in... Uh, in a world where being an entrepreneur is hard and she goes out into the world, tries to start her own business, wants to be an honest person, a good person. Um, and she, she can be rough around the edges, but just wants to always do the right thing. And she gets in these little adventures. It's not a super high stakes movie until kind of at the end. Um, but you can really connect with that character as well. And Godzilla Minus One, forget about it. If you've seen the movie, you know the characters are amazing. Every single one, even bit part characters who only have a couple lines. Like, they're all all well done. Uh, deep, meaningful, tragic, uh, and triumphant story arcs and all that stuff. With House, not so much. Um, it's just a weird weird ass movie the story behind it is really cool the guy the the guy who directed it like his kids had a lot of input on the movie and it shows it makes the movie fun it's colorful it's amazing i love it but it's just not the same as the other three uh with the like deeper personal connection that those movies have so i don't know what i'm gonna do right now i'm going to leave it but I'm thinking about what else could go in there. Like, uh, off the top of my head, I don't have too many that are like an obvious shoe in that are like trying to nudge their way into my top four. I did consider there's there's one weird, another like weird dark horse hipster choice that I could do, which is the the Phantom of the Paradise, which is a really great movie. Again, it's kind of weird. Um, there's some silly parts, it's goofy, it's cool, and I have rewatched it so many times that it's like ingrained in me. And it has not as deep characters as Kiki, Pearl, and Godzilla minus one, but a little bit deeper characters than House. Um, and it is a tragic story, but it, it's kind of goofy, but it's an amazing movie. So that's a possibility. And then I thought, well, how many times do you have to rewatch a movie to call it one of your favorites? Because this example, I Married a Witch, is such a great movie, but I only saw it once. I watched it once with my wife, and uh, we loved it so much when the credits were rolling. I said, uh, I said, honey, what do you think I should rate that on Letterboxd? And she said, oh, that was a five-star movie. I was like, hell yeah, it was. <laughs> so... Could that be in my top five, top four? I don't know. So it was an interesting day going through, watching all these movies that I'm posting on a social media site as my top four favorite movies of all time and kind of realizing that one of them isn't going to make the cut for much longer. I have to think about it. I have to watch more movies. I watch movies every single day. 
So I'm going to put my letterbox account in the description here. If you want to suggest movies I should watch in the comments, I would love that. I'm always looking for stuff to check out. And I appreciate you stopping by and hanging out, and I'll see you on the next video.